Hello to the gamers, or as we said in uh, 2004, peace up to the gamers. A town down to the gamers. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. You know what I'm talking about? Ushers, yeah. So true, so true. My Bene Gesserit sister dipped in Mama Shai Halud's blue oil. What a movie, man. What a movie. NL would drink the liquid, no questions asked, after dropping the tickets proverb about how the mind is already expanded, and that's a fact. I probably already got the water of life inside of me, if I had to guess. Lord knows I got the worm. So true. Or as we said in 2016. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Northern Lion Plays Balatro. Those were the days, man. Those were the days. Episode 189. <laughs> Last episode, we tried to do the orange steak on the Nebula deck, and it didn't go well. Man, this game's pretty tough. I want to say thank you guys for your comments. I know I haven't read any of them, but I'm pretending to read them. I apologize that you have been so offended by my lack of intelligence as filtered through my decisions in a video game. Clearly, I am the dumb one for playing a game and having fun, and you are the smart one for noticing all the mistakes and doing something productive with your time. Did you see the Ice Climbers tweet about you? Okay, 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 okay. okay. Let's, let's, kill let's kill him, let's, let's kill, kill this, this guy. guy, let's beat, let's him, beat him to death, him to death, with, death hammers. with hammers. Uh, yes, but it's not about me. It simply uses my reaction image of, okay, okay. We hate this guy, kill him, kill him with hammers. What can I say, that, that was the best eight second performance of my life. You know what's crazy? So, um, I finally saw Dune 2 this weekend. I enjoyed it immensely while watching it. I couldn't shake the feeling that it was a landmark release within my life. That this is like a $400 million budget movie where um, the most insane shit of all time happens. And I, I couldn't shake the juxtaposition that Denny Villeneuve came out, put his nuts on the table and said, check it out, Dune 2. And then it was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with fucking Ghostbusters 98. We got Bill Murray back for this one. But it's not sad. It's not sad. It's inspirational. It's not sad, okay? It's not sad that they got all the old actors and then the young actors. And then it's like the 18th time they've done like a spiritual passing of the torch from the old Ghostbusters to the new. It's not sad, okay? It's really good. And then Denny Villeneuve is like, ah. Lizan Al Gaib, like shit is happening in the movie. There's there's an on-screen uh, omniscient fetus. There's fucking people's eyes are turning deep shades of blue. There's 500 kilometer long worms with a million teeth inside of them. People are floating. I went to a theater. I did not realize it was 19 plus, which is totally fine because I'm plus 19. But uh, I was like, oh my god, this is what everybody's asked for, is like a movie theater that has no kids in it, because kids are always like disrupting movies. No kids in the movie, that's a plus. The downside is that our theater was 80% middle-aged men who had to clear their throat every 90 seconds, which is also disruptive in its own way. Fifth Avenue Cinema. You got me, you got me. Fifth Avenue Cinema, Barard and Fifth Avenue in sunny Kitsilano. Do they serve beer at this theater? They did, but I just got a large Diet Coke instead. And then um, the biggest popcorn I've ever seen in my entire life. So big that, I mean, I ate it through the nine previews, all of which are for movies that I will not see. That's just facts. Um, and then I ate it for like the first 30 minutes of Dune 2. And then I just said, enough is enough, man. Enough is enough. I just can't, I can't eat any more popcorn than this. I feel like I probably ate like a pound and a half of popcorn. You're not going to go see Kong X, 3X three, three Kong, 2X Godzilla? Um, no, but I, you know, more power to you. I hear like Godzilla's going through. You okay, buddy? Godzilla's going through like a renaissance. Right now, I'm just not really privy to it. You see Godzilla minus one? Nope. Um, Dune 2 is the first movie that I've seen in theaters since Matt Reeves' The Batman, which I believe came out eight and a half years ago. 
It's been a long time. And I like going to the movie theater, I do. It's just we, we had the unique situation. My parents were here. So I said, if we're gonna go see Dune, we gotta go see it like right now. Otherwise we may not be able to see it, you know. That's a movie, I hate when people say this, but you, you should see that in theaters if you get the chance. It's not gonna be the same on your phone. I'm not gonna say that, I mean, the emotional beats are what they are. But, you know, until you see these sandworm... Well, now that I think about it, if anyone's ever been to the Fifth Avenue Cinema, the screen is probably, like, smaller than the TV in my house. But there's something about seeing it in a room full of like-minded individuals. Also, I knew who was going to see Dune and who was going to see Ghostbusters, because everybody in line at the movie theater that looked like me walked into Dune. There were, like nine 30 year old dudes with a horseshoe and I was like my brothers <laughs> how was the peloton this morning it's pretty good it's still like um I I feel like I'm, I'm just getting the last little bit of mucus out of my lungs how dare you but I I think it was a well librarian oh I forgot I always forget Keep me honest, librarian, and thank you, Crimson Stockings, for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. I believe it was a 205 watt average. 1106 kilojoules, 205 watt average. There you go. There you go. Okay, this is good stuff. So it's pretty good. That's pretty. That's we're getting close to my um, to where I was at before. I got lung butter. I have strep throat. Any good tea recommendations? I don't. Um, I don't have any good tea recommendations. I wish I did for you. I'm not a tea guy. You ever hear of Neosporin? Not Neosporin. That's what you put on yourself when you get a cut, now that I think about it. You ever hear of Neocitrin? That's what I meant. Neocitrin. Or as they call it in the United Kingdom, because of course they do, Lemsip. How about Masala Chai? Did you know that um, masala means chai? So when you ask for masala chai, you're asking, actually asking for um, chai chai. <laughs> I bet you feel silly, man. Me, after I order naan bread and the waiter at the Indian restaurant goes into the back and then I hear everyone start laughing. Oh, brother, come on. I have a great counter to that, though. You know, you always be like, you know, hey, I was at the ATM machine the other day, and someone will be like, you know, the M stands for machine, right? So you're saying like automatic teller machine machine. You just look them dead in the eyes and you say, you know, you're gonna die someday. Me too. I'm not saying it's just gonna be you, but like, is this really how you want it? Wait, when you keep that memento mori in your head. I think it informs your decisions a little bit. You're like, are you really sure that you want to spend like your limited amount of time on Earth doing it? You see the video of UFC fighter getting bit mid-match? I did not see that. Who was he fighting? My daughter? <laughs> she do be, she do be biting a little bit, people. And then we go, hey! Stop, Dad. And then she gets freaked out because she like isn't fully in control of her own actions. All she knows is that she's upset because mommy and daddy use the Bene Gesserit voice. So she just kind of, you know, can I tell you, so we took our daughter out because um, it was my parents' last day in Vancouver yesterday. We took them out to a restaurant that was amenable for everybody. It's a soup and sandwich place, okay? My daughter, my, one of my daughter's favorite foods is grilled cheese sandwich. We took her out for a grilled cheese sandwich. We ordered a grilled cheese sandwich. It came out and we were like, wow, that looks beautiful. And she was freaking out, man. She was like, this restaurant smells yucky and the food looks yucky, but they did a beautiful job. And I was like, what the, what the heck are you talking about? So Kate was trying to feed her the grilled cheese, but because the grilled cheese was kind of like an artisan grilled cheese, it was on like a brioche or something like that. She was, uh, she was not having a great time because it didn't look like it was made with like Dempster's white bread. So she was like, cut it smaller, cut it smaller. And I cut it into like a little, like a single quanta of grilled cheese sandwich, right? Kate tried to feed it to her. And then she went like, Hum! and she bit Kate's finger a little bit. And then Kate was like, 
I'm mad at you because you bit my finger. And then she went, I'm so upset and it's daddy's fault. And I said, what did I do? And she said, you cut the piece of sandwich too big. And I'm like, I'm, don't, I'm completely innocent in this. The only thing I did at the restaurant is pay for the meal. Anyway, we're straight chilling. I also, come on. I slept on her, uh, on her floor on, I don't know if it was Thursday or Friday night, but I slept on her floor because she was like, I don't want to go to sleep without daddy. So we took like all the couch cushions and set up a bed on the floor. I can't do that. Two melatonin gummies got me from 10 a.m. till 5, 15 a.m., which I'm grateful for, but my back was not feeling great the next day. <laughs> it's like, I think my spine fell between like the two couch cushions. Hmm, early flushes. Paul McCartney at an Airbnb and he's not sure if the toilet's gonna handle his massive shit. Early flushes fill your eyes. I can't really lay in the plane on that one. Something fear creates when waters rise. Sleep pretty darling, do not cry. I don't know. Workshop that one. Kids these days don't respect Paul McCartney anyway, so what's the point, man? What's the fucking point? We got people out here saying the Beatles are overrated. The only opinion you ever hear about the Beatles is that they're overrated. It doesn't make any fucking sense, man. It doesn't make any fucking sense. OMG, are you Paul McCartney? I'll give you flushes for free. Now we're talking. Paul McCartney ordering uh, an original chicken duo sandwich from KFC. You see the Paul McCartney clip where he's in the car and he makes that sound? And he goes like, Bleh! Foreigner? Not in the Hall of Fame? What the fuck? <laughs> yes? Okay, so it's not just me. <laughs> I tried to explain 2x Pimpy to my girlfriend last night and she got mad at me. I can understand that. Like, you're, you're, we have no choice but to be burdened with the knowledge at this point. But, like, she didn't ask for that, bro. And she can't, like, you know, just forget about it. It's 2X Pimpy, bro. It's Popeye X Saline. It's Principe Vajita. <laughs> Saturday night and we in the spot. Don't believe me, just watch. Turns out the spot was the MGM Grand. Am I right? Hey, what do you think's going on with the Shohei Otani stuff? Plus two? I'm serious, man. He did that shit? <laughs> I don't know about that. He gets on base? He actually doesn't get on base. He hits home runs and strikes people out, right? I'm genuinely not a conspiracy theorist, but the Shohei Otani stuff's got me laughing. Because people, now that, like, it's stuff, stuff's starting to come out, they're like, and that motherfucker speaks fluent English. Why the fuck did he have an interpreter the whole time? <laughs> People were like, I went to, I went to university with that dude. He was talking in English all the damn time. He goes to the MLB. All of a sudden, he's got a full-time translator. It doesn't make any damn sense. But I kind of love it for him. I do. Yes. <laughs> if this shit breaks ever, ever, I'm uninstalling the game. Just so you know. Hey, Anel, do you think your ass would get swept up by Paul Atreides if you were a Fremen in the Dune universe? Yeah, I mean, what, what the fuck else are you gonna do, bro? Keep spitting in the coffee? Like, at some point, you gotta, you gotta throw your lot in with the rest of your fellow man. Now, I understand the idea that Paul Atreides is not necessarily a hero. I'm just saying, like, if, if my ass is just chilling in the desert, I'm probably getting swept up. I don't think, uh, I mean... If Stilgar is getting swept up, my ass is getting swept up. My mental is probably worse than his. You think you could ride the worm? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think I'm that guy. I'm probably the dude that uh, almost gets Dave Batista and then falls 13,000 feet to his death. I don't think I'm, I'm riding the worm. I'm probably one of the dudes in the tent on the worm that's like, oh, fuck. 17 day flight today. Oh, make sure I got my wireless headphones. I'm saying I don't think my ass would make it on Arrakis. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You got me. That that shit is, I, don't, I mean, that seems like an inhospitable place. Now on Getty Prime, 
On Getty Prime, I think I could make some moves, people. I already got the hairstyle and the skin tone. I would definitely be one of those motherfuckers in the stands going, yeah! <laughs> Kissing my uncle on the mouth. Hey, don't blow up my spot like that, okay? What I'm trying to say, yeah, I think I'd be an easy target for the Bene Gesserit to manipulate. Absolutely. I think I got levers to pull. You smoking that spice, though? I mean, I'll be honest with you. I think if you're on Arrakis, you don't even have a choice, right? You smoking that shit just when you walk outside. Hey, NL, would you use the Bene Gesserit voice to get free pizza delivery? No. I would pay for my pizza delivery because those people are working hard and they're the backbone of the community. But I would use it to get free money that I would then use to pay for the pizza delivery. For sure. No doubt about that. But I'm not going to screw over the pizza delivery service, you know, just to get... Like I, fundamentally, the shit should be free for me to begin with because I have mind control powers, you know? <clears throat> the back of this deck looks like... A Baskin Robbins after a fire. Okay, I expected that uh, what you said would make no sense, but you're absolutely right. I can see that. I, has anyone here ever uh, worked at a Baskin Robbins? What is it? What's the number? 57 flavors, or am I thinking of Heinz? 62 flavors? How many flavors do they have at Baskin Robbins? It's a famous number 37. 37. If anyone here has ever worked at a Baskin Robbins, tell me something, okay? Some of those quirky flavors, like your the the bubblegum birthday cake ice cream, you've been running that same tub since like 2021, right? I know vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, cookie dough, like that shit. You're you're going through like a tub every two days or something like that, but. <laughs> Goldenrod Espresso, I know you're still rocking 2021 Vintage. Mmm, ice cream so old. <laughs> I haven't been to a Baskin Robbins in a long time. I am, uh, I would say I'm Dairy Queen pilled right now. Menchie's is good. I feel like Menchie's, uh, it's a frozen yogurt spot. They kind of, uh, they popped off for a while. And then they all disappeared. It was like in 2010 when like cupcakes started popping off everywhere. Like every mall ha had eight cupcake stores. And then like three years later, there were no cupcake stores left in existence. By the way, if anyone here is a restaurateur, I have a great business idea for you. I think, and everyone's going to say no. That's how you know it's a good idea. <clears throat> the world is ready for a 2010 restaurant. A restaurant that mines 2010 nostalgia. I want a bottle of sriracha on every single table. I want posters in the restaurant that say keep calm and bacon on. We are so ready for a 2010 restaurant to come back. It's too soon. It's been 14 years, bro. He's cooking. <laughs> Finger mustache is so true. Plus two bit, minus two idea. You wouldn't catch me eating there, that's for sure. But everything's maple bacon. Every burger has a like runny egg on top of it and an onion ring. The burgers are all 32 feet tall. I'm going in. Why haven't malls all died out yet? Uh, I, well, they're not busy. I'll definitely tell you that, but I think I'm part of like the last mall generation. I like the mall, man. Or at least I don't, I don't have the same kind of like negativity associated with the mall that like people 10 years younger than myself seem to have. Everything, the mall, here's, and I can already tell people are gonna say NL's the modern Socrates. It's crazy to me that people out there like buffets but don't like malls. Because a mall is basically just a buffet of stores. As a result of having access to all this convenience and variety, yes, of course, every store is mid. The same way when you go to a buffet, like the butter chicken isn't as good as the butter chicken would be at an Indian restaurant. The orange chicken isn't as good as it would be at a Chinese restaurant. The chicken tenders aren't as good as they would be at a chicken tenders restaurant. But you embrace mid 
in exchange for the convenience of having access to a variety. It's the same thing with the mall. Yeah, when you go to the mall, you're not going to be like, oh, check out this amazing one-of-a-kind thing I got at the mall. But you're going to be like, check it out, bitch. I got chicken teriyaki, gym shorts, and my prescription filled, like, all in the same day. Plus, you get to walk around with the little orange Julius. It's just, you know, it's, it's a nice way to spend a, a couple hours sometimes. I'm not like, you know, it's not my idea of a good time to go to the mall like on vacation or something like that. But, you know, if you got nothing else to do, you can you can kill 90 minutes in a mall. Easy mode. I'll take us to fucking Saturn any day of the week, bro. It's probably the best planet. You ever think that Uranus gets sort of like pissed off because Saturn gets all the credit for having rings, but Uranus also has rings? And then people are like, yeah, but the rings are like vertical instead of horizontal. Hey man, fuck you. Uranus flexes, it's an ice giant. It's fucking like negative, negative 254 degrees Celsius on that bitch or something. Twitch shatters from Norway have been real quiet ever since the Uranus weather forecast dropped. You thought you had it bad in Svalbard? It's fucking three degrees Celsius in July? Well, why don't you go to Uranus, motherfucker? It's almost absolute zero. It is a Stephen A. Smith type bit. Saturn, I get it. Saturn's got rings. But you, you, you got to consider the longevity of Uranus. You got to consider the blueness of Uranus. Stephen A. Smith is a William Herschel stan. I've never been like more thankful to not know what the fuck that means. I don't know what that means. It's not as limited as a, as a Mercury. So true. He's the guy who found Uranus. Oh, well, he's taking credit for Uranus. Uranus obviously existed before he found it. Uranus has numerous climate phenomena that science can't understand. Um, you sure? You talking about the hexagonal demon cloud? Ever since they yeeted Pluto, like we're kind of chilling. Like most of the planets are pretty good. Mercury is probably the worst. I just don't see the point. Um, and then like Uranus and Neptune, I just think that they have a PR problem because it's like after Saturn, it's like they got Uranus, they got Neptune. Which one's the big blue one? Which one's got the rings? Like they just, they, they, they kind of get lost in the, in the shuffle together. They're like twin planets. There's no doubt Earth is up there. Venus, I feel like Venus kind of sucks ass too. Like, I'm it's not going to hold it against it, but like a planet that's filled with like choking sulfuric acid clouds. Like, that sounds not nice for sure. So I got to say like Earth is up there. Saturn is up there. Saturn's just the coolest planet. I resisted it for a long time, but it's true. And then I think number three, you got to say it's either Jupiter because it's big as fuck, or you got to say Mars because... It's so close and yet it's so far away that it captures the human imagination. That's my that's my top three planets. You're telling me it's not Planet X, which we're doomed to collide with like every other year? Is that true? Is that one of those things where like it, uh, we pass like, they're like, this is the closest this planet has ever been to Earth. And then when you actually look at the real news story, it's like 100 trillion miles away. Any words of wisdom for those of us experiencing sunis, sudden penis explosion syndrome? Um, I think I gotta look up the the symptoms of this sudden penis explosion syndrome. Six, hang on, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. First, we're gonna do that. Sudden penis explosion syndrome. Google did not autocomplete. <clears throat> Coro. Coro is a culture-bound delusional disorder in which individuals have an overpowering belief that their sex organs are retracting and will disappear. It's also known as shrinking penis. <laughs> the syndrome occurs worldwide and mass hysteria of genital shrinkage and anxiety has a history in Africa, Asia, and Europe. Sorry, in North America we're just built different. The word was borrowed from Malay and means head of a turtle referring to how it looks when they retract their heads into their shells. Human brain is crazy, man. Can you imagine going to the doctor and you're like, my penis is gonna shrink and fall off? 
No wonder my ass can't get an appointment. I don't want any of this shit. What am I, what am I doing? Were you in the pool? That's the first question the doctor has to ask. You've astutely noticed that for sure. Because if you were in the pool, like all bets are off. We're shrinking dick, yo guys. <laughs> Five guys is shrinking dick in Munchen. Did you see the tweets about r slash adultery? And the dude who got upset his wife lied about knowing he was cheating? Yes, I did. I did see the, the posts about the guy who was cheating on his wife. And then he felt betrayed that she had apparently discovered that he was cheating several months ago, but kept it a secret from him so that he got blindsided when she left him. And everybody in the comments, I mean, this is r slash adultery, but everybody in the comments is like, bro, you cheated on her. And he's like, I know, but I just didn't think that she had this in her. And I was, you're like, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> Like, nobody was giving him any sympathy at all. Which is fair. Egg is rocking the stubble. I think um, I have accepted I'm going to grow a beard. For a bit, at least. Not for a bit, like not for comedic purposes, but for, for a, a period of time. And the horseshoe. I haven't decided what length to keep the horseshoe at, um, but I do like having a little horseshoe, honestly. This might even be a little too much. Like, maybe we gotta trim this down a little bit. But definitely the beard's got a way to go. Sorry, I was mustering the strength to open a uh, Costco protein bar. My parents, uh, so they were here for two weeks, okay? They have reached, I don't know if this is universally true of people as they age. But they have reached uh, an age where after they eat dinner, they just eat a protein bar. It's their life. I'm not trying to like, you know, tear them down or anything like that. But they would like eat dinner. And then they would like my mom would reach into her purse and she would pull out two protein bars and they would just eat the protein bars. My dad does the same thing after lunch. <laughs> I, I don't know where it came from, but it seems to be working out well for him. She does keep the MF and thing on her. That's for she's got like. She's protein barred up to the freaking gills, man. By the way, who gave me a subscription to uh, a, a Twitch streamer? Let me see. The prefix of their emote is bat at. So what ends up happening? is I go into someone else's chat and I type bat and then I go for auto completes and then I post this so get get your eyes ready and then Justin is like Ryan what fucking emote is that and I'm like I don't know man I was just trying to put bat chest but now I got this anime lady transforming into like a, a demogorgon or something is actually, I, I don't mean this in a negative way to the streamer, but I've been gifted like a, a malevolent gift sub that has ruined my autocomplete for Bat Chest, which is an emote I do all the time. They put out a damn hit on me, man. I'm, I'm getting trolls. <laughs> I got griefed. It's not like a, again, it's nothing against the streamer, but I'm like, my whole workflow is all fucked up now. Always take banana. Give you that one for free. Face, you know what? This, this could give us some economics. One in seven cards get drawn face down. Am I insane to think that that sounds insane? Me when I'm Corey? <clears throat> I was thinking about me. Oh my God, it's an amazing space joker. I was thinking about making a Corey tweet on the weekend because I was in, Kits <coughs> in Kitsilano and there was an esthetician. And on the, you know how every business now has like a neon sign that says like, keep calm and fucking coffee on or whatever. This one had a, um, a sign out in the front and I'll, I'll give you the Corey rap that I was gonna tweet and that will unveil to you what the sign said. Uh oh, you gotta stop me. I think it's getting clear. The best facials are happening here. Uh oh, y'all, it's getting kind of hazy. <laughs> So 
so fucking true. No, NL, you're not supposed to hold it in. It doesn't do anything. I still think that's bullshit. I was always told, I mean, I'm, we're working on antiquated knowledge here from the antediluvian era. I was always told to hold it in. Doctor here, you don't need to hold it in. Well, like back in the day, I'm just gonna be honest with you. Everyone that I ever smoked weed with uh, in college was basically the dumbest person on the planet. The weed phenotype used to be idiot. But then at some point, like it shifted and now everybody who smokes weed has like a PhD in chemical engineering and shit. So you used to like get weed knowledge from like the dumbest motherfucker you ever met who's like, yeah, you have to hold it in for six seconds so it gets into your lungs. And then now people are like, well, actually, like it passes the blood brain barrier in like one eighth of a second. So you, as long as you hold it in for at least one eighth of a second, you're good. And I'm like, what the fuck? When did we when did we cross this threshold? NL, I pull into the McDonald's drive through with my kids in the car and order a black coffee. Am I the asshole? Yes. I, it's, I don't know what you want me to tell you, but yes, that makes you the asshole. With, with no disrespect, you know, like it's hard out there for everybody. <clears throat> but if you are going, th if you're getting yourself something at McDonald's, you have to get your kids something at McDonald's. And sometimes, as a parent, it's an uncomfortable truth. A lot of people are not going to like this. But honestly, as a parent, you got bigger problems. <laughs> this is relatively minor. Sometimes being the, the parent means that even when you want a treat, you have to acknowledge that it's not an amenable situation for a treat. For example, my daughter had always had a snack, or she already had a snack yesterday. She already had some like Hello Kitty marshmallows that were filled with strawberry jam or something like that. I, after lunch, I was like, I could kind of go for a sweet treat. I could kind of go for like a DQ blizzard or something like that. That would really hit the spot. But then I thought to myself, I can't do it. Because if I go to Dairy Queen, I have to get my kids something. Otherwise, she's going to be very upset. And if I get her something, that's way too much sugar for like a three and a half year old to have. I don't know what the optimum level of sugar is for a three and a half year old. It's probably zero. <laughs> so I said, you know what? I, I've, I've got to go without for now. It's the, it's the way of the world. If your kid is two months old. Yeah, you, I mean, that's kind of like peak fat dad time. Well, no, 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 because you're not eating leftover breast milk. I would say when your kid's like one and a half, that's peak fat dad time. Because like the only thing that many kids eat is either fruit that's really fucking expensive, like a Tulfo mangoes or something like that. They don't want the honey mangoes. They only want the red and green ones. Or they're like, I only want grilled cheeses, quesadillas, and like air fried French fries. And then they eat like four French fries. And because they weigh three kilograms, they're like, I'm full. And you're like, well, I guess I got to eat the rest of the bag. What did you just say? Well, I was thinking like peak fat dad times is when you make your kid a meal, but then they only eat like an eighth of it. So I was going to say two months old was peak fat dad times, but kids don't start eating solid food until they're like six months old. The other thing, that is that is the other thing, the breast milk thing. That's what I'm saying. You're not e eating leftover breast milk. You're eating leftover grilled cheese. It is crazy. Like this website is so fucking cooked. There's people out there who are literally like, oh, I don't like fucking lettuce. And they're like, you didn't try the breast milk? You fucking bitch, you don't eat cauliflower. No, I didn't try the breast milk. I'm a normal guy. You think your ass is like so freaky. You think you're so out there. Then you go to like a fucking Lebanese restaurant and you're like, can I have the chicken tenders? Don't put on airs in my chat. I see right through you. Any yogurt Andrews in the chat? Don't answer that. that that's a thinly veiled question. I don't know what they're trying to discover, but don't answer it. No, man, I'm sure as shit not going to describe myself on the internet as a yogurt Andrew, okay? You're not going to catch me doing that. <laughs> By the way, I found out this weekend that um, for the last two weeks, I have had my DPI set twice as high as it normally is by accident. Bro, I've been gone so long. 800 DPI actually feels like my mouse is on the most slippery ice of all time. I've, I've quadruple checked that I'm on 800 DPI. I'm like, why is the mouse moving so fast, bro?
This has got to be 3,200, maybe 1,600. You're telling me this is 3,200 DPI? Or 800 DPI? So I'm not sure how to feel about a difficult game about climbing. I'm not sure if it's going to be easier. I'm not sure if it's going to be the same. Or if it's going to be harder. Because now we're dealing with a, with a completely different... It's like going to a new planet. Like our gravity is different. What's the best gravity? Me personally, I'd have to say one. I'm like a huge Earth fan, to be honest with you. I mean, like, it's got its problems. But like most of Earth's problems, like, were man-made, right? Like, as far as planets go, they really broke the mold with that bitch. I mean, like, what are the big problems on Earth? I'd rather not live next to, like, a volcano or have, like, a risk of dying in a horrible earthquake or something like that or get killed by a hurricane. But at, like, the same time, when you compare... Okay, so what about Mercury? Mercury is, like, fucking 400 degrees Celsius. Venus has choking clouds of sulfuric acid. Mars is, uh, there's no fucking air, and it's minus 100 degrees Celsius. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune would literally turn you into a, a cube the second you entered their gravitational pull. Rip to all your non-Earth viewers. Honestly, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, if you're an alien out there, come kill me. Okay, 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 let's kill him. Let's kill this guy. Let's beat him to death with lasers. I'm waiting. I'll take one for the team. People will literally be like, why would you say that? Well, you fucking know that margarine's bad for you. You still put it on your toast. There's, there's scientific literature for that shit. I eat my toast dry. You're, you're not going to reach heaven, brother. Dry toast is, is crazy. Isn't that some shit you eat when you're on NoFap? Lamau, <laughs> Lamau. Really, nothing on the toast? Are you a seed oil enjoyer? Yeah, yeah, I think so. What about, uh, is olive oil a seed oil? That's my predominant oil. Olive and avocado. Yes, yes, no, 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 yes, yes. <laughs> Botanist here, olives are fruits. Shouldn't you be like on the International Space Station or something? Or it, fucking, how about inventing? Are the botanists just lazy? Why do we still have trees that are susceptible to like Dutch elm disease and fucking Japanese beetle infestations? Fucking get on that shit, bro. What else are you doing? Oh, we're genetically engineering a corn plant that has 3% more oil in it. It's gonna have to, fuck that, bro. The trees are dying, okay? Can't you just put like a gene from a rock into a tree so the Dutch elm can't get in anymore? It's just that easy. <laughs> you ever think about how cooked, or not cooked, the opposite. You ever think about how sick it is that like 300 generations ago they invented artificial selection and now our fruit tastes fucking divine? They really did us a solid. I feel like these days, we can't do anything anymore. We can't fucking, at least in North America, they're like, oh, we can't, take, we can't build a bridge. Sorry, you could only build a bridge in 1930. Nowadays, even though the technology's gotten so much better and the world economy has grown like 35x since we built the last bridge, they're just too expensive now. We can't build bridges anymore. Back in like the year of fucking negative 32,000, they were like, brother, let's only plant the orange seeds that make good oranges. But we won't live in a world with good oranges. Yes, but our great, 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 great grandchildren will have fucking cracked navel oranges. And they said, what a noble cause, my brother. And they fucking did that shit. We can't do anything anymore, man. Society flourishes when men plant trees they will never sit in the shade of. We're fucking taking out the chainsaw, bro. They 2 x our pimpy. So true. They took away our third spaces, but 3 x our bape. It makes me fucking sick. Yeah, there's no malt shops anymore, but we crossed a Mewtwo with a fucking Elsa. NL, if approached by your political party of choice to run for office, would you run for office? No. I think one of the reasons that politics is kind of cooked is because you basically have... It's a raw deal, bro. You have to either be like 
lusting for power or stupid to, or incredibly noble, more noble than me to get into politics. 20% of the population assumes that you are like a fucking conspiracy Freemason who drinks human blood and you're like, I'm literally just trying to get a bike lane installed on Canby Street, brother. Like, uh, can you just, and what, a city councilor, you get paid like $81,000 a year for the privilege? No fucking thank you, bro. They gotta fix the incentives, bro. That's why I think it should be like the Hunger Games. You should be able to choose the president and they should not be able to refuse. Because I only want a president who doesn't want to be president because they got other shit going on. I want to have to force someone to be president because they're the best candidate. What if it was you? I'd be pissed off. Cadmus was pissed off. I'd be pissed off. I'm out for dead presidents to represent me. The world is yours. So true, Nas. So true. I'm embarrassed to say I had to look up that lyric on Rap Genius. When he said I'm out for dead presidents to represent me, I was like, what is he talking about? Like Abraham Lincoln? Well, in a way, turns out he's talking about money. There's that tend to be dead presidents on paper currency. <laughs> oh, bros collecting pennies. <laughs> Lincoln's on the penny, huh? And the five? Oh, and do double it and give it to the next guy. That's what James Buchanan said. James Buchanan was the president um, before uh, Abraham Lincoln. So true. How'd you know that? I, every once in a while, I like to look up um, historians' rankings of like best presidents and worst presidents. And it's actually like, it's pretty easy to remember because all the best presidents, according to historians, you already know them. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, FDR. Trump, you know, they're always in the top quintile. And then like all of the worst presidents, according to historians, are literally like the six presidents before and then after Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> they, re they had a string of like total dog shit presidents. And then a they, they got one fucking Lizan Al Gaib and then they went right back to the, to the well, man. Like Ulysses S. Grant, maybe he's he's probably somewhere. He's, I bet he's in the top half of U.S. presidents, but he fucked up Reconstruction a bit. Well, like, listen, I'd like to see you do better. I don't really know that much about Ulysses S. Grant except for Wild Wild West. Teddy Roosevelt was cool, but he's also kind of a meme. It's crazy. Isn't Teddy Roosevelt like the second youngest president in history? It's crazy to think. I mean, that's just what like 42 year old dudes look like back then, I guess. Dude's wearing like a suit and tails with a cummerbund and a fucking monocle and a chain attached to his belt and shit like that. He was the youngest? No shot, bro. No shot. Obama was younger than Teddy Roosevelt, right? JFK was the youngest? Obama's 65? Yeah, fucking now. In, two, in, in 08, that motherfucker was hooping, bro. He was 47 and Teddy was 42. 42, holy cow. That is... That is young, man. Here's a trivia question for you. What's the youngest... And I don't have the answer. What's the youngest person who's ever run for president? Like, as the, lead, the candidate for one of the major parties? Is there some shit in, like, uh, you know, the 1800s where, like, a 28-year-old dude actually ran? List of presidential candidates that didn't win is kind of obscure. Well, I don't know any of those fuckers from the 1800s, basically. I will say, it's crazy to think, well, I was going to say in our lifetime, but now that uh, I think about it, you probably weren't alive. In, it was either 92 or 96, Ross Perot got fucking like 18% of the vote. That's crazy, bro. Nowadays, the third parties get like 2%. That dude was out here getting a, a fifth of Americans. Hey, Anel, what was the last TV show that caused you to get pissed off beyond belief? You ever hear of a little show called The News? True. Kate, Kate didn't like that joke, though. Now I'm getting shamed. My shower is dirty. It's the place I go into when I'm at my dirtiest. Of course it's dirty. That's what it's, that's what it's there for. <laughs> Why are you shitting in the shower? It's just like, I, I'm, I don't wanna, 
unreasonably defend myself. It's just body hair. Like, you go into the shower, you fucking shower, and, like, every time you shower, like, ten body hairs fall off of you. Aren't you, like, Bigfoot-level hairy? No, that motherfucker is, like, an animal. He's, he's literally coated in, like, a thick layer of hair. He, you can't see his skin. I don't know how to describe... I, I wouldn't be surprised if within the male community, I'm top 1% hairy. But, like, I'm just, I don't know, I'm kind of over it. Like, I saw a, a, a Twitter deep-fried Reddit post that was like, why are older generations so comfortable being naked in the locker room? And, like, literally every post that replied to it was exactly how I wanted to reply to it. It was more like, why is your ass so, like, shy about being naked in the locker room, bro? It's your... You just reach a point where you're like, you just don't care anymore. Like, I, I, you go to the gym, you get sweaty, you're not gonna fucking walk out of the gym with your sweat-soaked underpants and get, like, a fungal infection on your balls just because you're worried that some dude's gonna be, like, he's gonna body shame you or something like that. You just got it. Nobody cares, man. I don't want to see old people's balls, bro. Okay, then fucking don't go to the YMCA, bitch. There are people, too. You're gonna be an old person with balls someday. Why are you looking? They're going to the gym, they're getting their exercise, they gotta change too. Oh, the fucking dudes in the locker room aren't hot. We fucking asshole? What are you talking about? You think that gives you the moral high ground? Americans are so cooked, bro. We are, I, I'm lumping Canadians in there too. We are cooked on nudity, bro. I am not cooked on nudity. I don't really, like in, in a position like a gym changing room or like a swimming pool changing room, my ass is going au naturel. That's like, that's the place that you do it. I'm not going to walk around, you know, with just my balls hanging out in public or something like that. But like, if you're not getting naked at the change room, then what the fuck are you doing, man? Seeing my dick and balls is a privilege those strangers haven't earned. Okay, so you're embarrassed and you're covering for it with like machismo or something. Because like nobody in the locker room cares. What about you not pissing in urinals? That's more because, like, I'm worried about you guys being freaks. And then, like, I get validated in it all the time. Like, did you see the post of the Smash Bros guy at the urinal? And then the, the picture was, like, always catch him when they least expect it or something like that. That's why you'll catch my ass going to the stall. <laughs> I'm not, you will not see a selfie of me giving, like, the peace sign behind while I'm holding my cock out at the urinal. That's not going to happen. No one cares, though. That one, I'd rather just wait for a stall, honestly. Plus, I have a little bit of a shy bladder. As far as I'm concerned, the whole bathroom should be stalls to begin with. But obviously, that's a battle. I don't have the political capital to win that battle yet. Best we can do is a trough. <laughs> I mean, it's literally like the, one of the worst ways to piss, for sure. You love the trough? What do you love about the trough? Don't spin me a yarn about humanity. Oh, you really feel like you're part of... You're fucking getting in touch with your animal side when you go piss in a trough. What's next? We're going to have people uh, standing for the, the soap that is just shoved onto a metal rod. It's efficient, though. I literally don't care about the efficiency of a bathroom. I care about my own comfort. Just make them all stalls or at least put up dividers between each of the urinals. You'll be uncomfortable in line. You don't know me. I love lining up. I don't get why places don't have dividers. It's literally because in North America, we're not allowed to have nice things. We really expect Rogers Arena to put up dividers? That would cost like $60 per urinal stall. They can't afford that. Beers are only $23 each here. Won't somebody think of the corporation? The thing that pisses me off is people are like, they'll be like anti-stall. They'll be like, why should we have stalls just for people who are pissing? Okay, well, why don't we fucking take the stalls away then? Why don't we take the walls away and have you shit in a trough next to one another? You fucking status quo Andy. No, no, no. It, oh, no, it just so happens the things as they are, as they are is perfect. If we made them better, it would actually be worse. And if we made them worse, that would be too much. It's actually just that the way that things have always been, like the exact system that I grew up with is as good as it could possibly be, you fucking unimaginative Andrew.
no, no, no. It's okay to piss next to other people, but you don't shit next to other people. No, no, no. The, the fucking wall with a three-foot gap at the bottom and a six-foot gap at the ceiling is blocking the smells. Are you listening to yourself? I know why you don't like the stalls. Because based on the condition of the average men's bathroom, half you motherfuckers don't know how to flush. Flushing is so hard. First, you have to, like, find what kind... Some of you don't always find yourself in a place cognitively where you're able to easily identify where the flusher on the toilet is. And then you've got to, like... <laughs> it, is, it all comes back to DoorDash discourse at the end of the day. Yeah, flushing's bad for the environment. The flush handle is dirty. It would be way better to just leave my shit in like an open bowl for the next person to have to fucking take an eyeful of when they come in. Yeah. yeah, I saw the post that said one in five Americans can't eat uh, leftovers. Apparently the microwave adds histamines into the food or something, but yet everybody's going crazy for endless appetizers at Applebee's. Doesn't make any sense. You ever have the automatic flusher flush while you're still doing your business? This is why we need our own Butlerian Jihad, to be honest. The technology at some point was good, and then it went too far. Nobody wants to touch the flusher because of the germs. Okay, so instead we have toilets that flush eight times while you're taking one piss. Like, are we, we have to choose what we're going to be self-righteous about, bro. Are we going to be self-righteous about cleanliness or about environmentalism? People are too afraid of germs. I thought that too until I got like really sick. And now I'm real careful about that shit. But I still think the average person takes it too far. Or no, maybe not the average person, but the average insane person. Hey, now, what would survive your personal butlerian jihad? Good question. Let me think about that. Toasters, no, no doubt. Toasters aren't thinking machines. <laughs> I guess that's true. Hmm, let me think about that. I've never read Dune, by the way. Thou shalt not make a machine in the likeness of the human mind. I don't know. I, I mean, I, what would survive? My computer? GPS systems? I don't know. I mean, GPS systems, sure. They do a lot of good for society. But I've been living that non-GPS life. I know it drives my wife crazy, but I, I've been navigating Vancouver like a taxi driver for like three or four years now, and it feels fucking sick, bro. But then every once in a while, I'll have to go somewhere that's on like a street I've never heard of, and then I gotta use the GPS. But if I'm, otherwise, if I know the location of something, I'm just, I'm, I'm going east, west, north, south, bro. I'm, I know the cross streets. It's so freeing. I know. And then people are like, what if it takes you like, you know, three minutes longer to get to your destination? That's life, brother. It takes three minutes to set up the GPS. Yeah, sometimes. And then the motherfucking GPS doesn't know that there's, like, construction on our Arbutus Street. So my ass ends up getting stuck there for, like, 10 minutes. And I'm like, damn, dude, I could have just gone to, like, West 16th via, like, fucking... Give me a second here. <laughs> Probably via McDonald. <laughs> I'm like, who is this bit for? <laughs> Well, I don't know, like, your fucking ass would probably turn left on Blenheim Street or something like that. But I trust the city planners, okay? I, until I get close to my destination, I take the major thoroughfares, bro. Because they got ordinances so people are not parking on the street during peak hours. They got more lanes. They got, you know, better ways to control the flow of traffic. So I'm not sending my ass down a side street and then all of a sudden, oh, there's cars parked on both sides of the street and bi-directional traffic. You will catch my ass on one of the major arterials, bro. You'll catch me on Oak. You'll catch me on Canby. You'll catch me on fucking Granville. You'll catch me on Burrard. You'll catch me on one, of, we're going the other direction. You'll fucking catch me on West 16th. You'll catch me on West 41st or some shit like that, okay? You won't catch me like, oh, you gotta go to fucking take Central Street. You end up in some suburb you've never seen before. No shot, bro. It's not gonna happen. West 41st is not Vancouver. Bitch, what the fuck are you talking about? That runs through Carysdale, bro. Where the fuck do you live? Like the North Van or something like that? West 41st is fucking Vancouver, bro. 
Although you're one of those people who's never been like south of West 8th. Okay, come out of Mount Pleasant sometimes. The water's fine, okay? Listen, I know you're up in Brewery Creek. You got access to R&B, Brass Neck, Electric Unicorn, shit like that. You're going to Slim's Barbecue on Friday. Okay, congratulations. Come a little bit south sometime. There's a whole city down there. Come take a trip to the Richmond Costco, bro. I'd rather go to Burnaby than fucking go, bro. And take some fucking half-cooked route, too. Don't take Highway 1. Oh, Highway 1's so busy. Fucking find your ass taking, like, Broadway all the way to Burnaby or something like that. Nice way to turn a 31-minute drive into, like, a two-hour odyssey. Your ass, yeah, exactly. Your ass gonna take Kingsway all the way? Pull into Kingsway and Boundary, stop at Magic Stronghold, pick up a couple of packs of Modern Masters, ask for some directions. I'm out of the loop. Well, it's not really like a bit that's made for everybody. It's really just made for people in Vancouver. Can you start talking about Kingston, Ontario streets now? There's only like five of them. You got your Gardeners Road, you got your Bath Road, you got your Princess, your Queen, and your Brock Street. I guess you got King Street East and Ontario Street, and then fucking what? Where do we go from there, Kingstonians? Taylor Kid Boulevard? <laughs> really? Are we going? <laughs> Barrick Street? Oh, brother. Barrick Street. Yeah. Work. Sir John A. McDonald? Okay, West End Andy. You pick up something at uh, the Kingston Center for me? Albert and Alfred, always confusing my ass. So true. Well, I'll tell you what, you just need to remember that uh, VIP Chinese, that's on Alfred. Day five of asking NL to play commander at the Commercial Drive Legion on Mondays. It's not going to happen, but I love that for you. If you were to catch me on Commercial on Monday, I would definitely be playing at Grandview Lanes. But I'll just be honest with you, you're not going to catch me at Commercial on a Monday. They really got you playing commander at the Legion, huh? I love that, though, because that's like you're actually being part of the community. Like, you're, you're getting together with other like-minded individuals out there in East Van, and I'm sure there's some generational mixing as a result, right? You probably got fucking Korean war vets in there, and then you got, like, 19-year-old kids with, like, bespoke commander decks. That's a cultural exchange, bro. That sounds sick. That's what, that's what society's all about. We used to do Friday Night Magic in the basement of our church. I know it smelled crazy down there. I kind of miss that smell, though, man. I know it's like literally mold and mildew, but like you walk into a place that smells like that, like there's something homey about it. Thank you for the Vancouver talk. I'm going back to my lunch. Where are you going for lunch, motherfucker? Are you going to lunch, lady? You going to Sally Lemon? I think it's over for Sally Lemon, man. Now that they're, as soon as you get a location in the airport, I no longer take you seriously as a restaurant. You are now a business, which is fine if you want to be a business, but I don't want to eat at a business, I want to eat at a restaurant. The bagel place with the crazy owner? Well, here's the thing, the bagel place with the crazy owner, I'm pretty sure that that shit is like Yukon and 8th. So you got a, a w ways to go to get there from Commercial Drive, and we were not going to be door dashing a bagel, okay? That's how we got into this discourse to begin with. Go to Kokoro Tokyo Maze Soba at Station Square. I have been to Kokoro Tokyo Maze Soba. I liked it, but I do have to say, at the end of the day, if we're talking noodles, I'd rather just go to one of Vancouver's many vaunted uh, ramen places. The Maze Soba, I liked it. A little bit different for sure, but I'm a... Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm kind of a Dombo guy, man. I'm kind of a Dombo guy. Shea Piggy me. Now we're back to Kingston. I've been to Shea Piggy. I've been to Shea Piggy. I've been to the Toucan many a time. Shea Piggy pretty good. Go to Fresh Slice at Broadway City Hall Station. Um, the, if I'm at Broadway City Hall Station, let me think about that. I mean, you can, you can walk to the Wendy's. It's like two blocks down there. You might honestly, rather than go to that Fresh Slice, why don't you just walk two blocks down, go to the Whole Foods? For the same price as Fresh Slice, the Whole Foods pizza slices actually slap. I mean, the, the groceries are expensive, but the Whole Foods pizza is pretty good, man, by Vancouver standards. I think you're making bad pizza choices. There's also, like, a, there's an A&W on the corner there. 
Royal Tavern's my favorite bar in Kingston. Now you are literally just on Google Maps, or you are a member of the Hells Angels, in which case, leave me alone. <laughs> Your quarrel's not with me, man. I'm not doing anything. Just, I don't even know any longshoremen, okay? Hear any good songs on the radio lately? Here's some Olivia Rodrigo now and then. Any new tracks on the Peloton playlist? You know what? I always like to be, I, I like to keep you honest on that one. I like when you keep me honest on that one. The most recent song added to the Peloton playlist is, I don't even want to tell you. It's too Canadian pill. I'm on a Sloan kick. Most recent song added to the Peloton playlist, If It Feels Good, Do It by Sloan. A little embarrassed. I mean, it's not a transcendental song. I added, um, if it feels good, do it. Money City Maniacs, Losing California, and I already had, uh, of course, Underwhelmed on there, because it's probably like one of the top 10 Canadian songs of all time. Holy shit, another person who listens to Sloan. Bro, we're bringing Sloan back, man. We are, we are getting rid of the Arkells, and we are bringing Sloan back. We didn't know how good we had it. Are they like Slint? Not at all. You got any Madonna on there? I have two Madonna songs on there. In one message, can you type the two Madonna songs that you think are on my Peloton playlist? I want to see who gets... I said two songs! I want you to get them both right, okay? I haven't seen it yet. I have, I've, I've seen them individually, but I haven't seen it yet. Vogue is not on the playlist, but Vogue should be on the playlist. Hey! Whoa, 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 Someone got it. Alphonse underscore M. You are correct. It is Ray of Light and Hung Up. Both great songs. Also both incredible songs for uh, climbing. Perfect cadence, perfect energy for climbing. But Vogue should be on there as well. I'm a, I'm a big Vogue guy. How much Sum 41? Zero, and uh, I think it's going to stay that way. But I, I'm realizing I have to be a little bit less um, picky about what I put on the playlist. Because when you're riding for like 90 minutes a day, you start chunking through those songs pretty quick. Like I, I've, I've listened to Mojo Pin and Grace by Jeff Buckley like eight times this week. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying we, I, I got to open the floodgates. Instead of just like the best two songs on every album, it's got to be, I got to open it to like the best five songs on every album. Why not just full albums? When I'm working out, I want, I want the hits. I don't want the filler tracks. I want like, if I'm going for 90 minutes, I want 23 singles. I don't want any interludes. I don't want any fucking skits. How much Mika's on there? There's zero Mika. There's a little Annie, though. Tragically Hip. Two Tragically Hip songs on the playlist. Now, this is, this is a fun game while we make no progress at all. <laughs> Can you guess in one message the two Tragically Hip songs on the playlist? Whee! <laughs> oh, I, actually, I was wrong. There are three Tragically Hip songs on the playlist. All right, this one's tougher. Not as many people familiar with the Tragically Hip. It is Grace 2, X Pimpy, 50 Mission Cap, and At the 100th Meridian. No Bob Cajun? If I was riding outside, I could, I could put some Bob Cajun out there. Is there any rap on the playlist? Brother. <laughs> Come on. Of course not. I love all music. There's only two genres I don't respect, country and rap music. Next question. Of course there's a rush on, or a rap on there. You think I don't respect uh, Camp Low, Black Nostalgia, and Cooley High by Camp Low? It's kind of crazy you got Camp Low back there. Yeah. I also have some Liquid Swords on there. I mean, there's a lot of rap on there. Problem is, Liquid Swords, sometimes, you know, title track comes on like 61 minutes into your ride and it starts with like an eight-year-old Japanese kid. <laughs> My father would come home. He would forget about the killings. 
the Shogun sent his team of ninja spies to attack our village. And I'm like, brother, call. it's like 91 seconds of intro. Like, I got to <laughs> give, give me some Jizza insanity, bro. Okay, hang on. Go. Mr. President, I'm afraid Doom's becoming too powerful. It's a great genre of tweet. Hey, NL, there's a Curtis Blow Peloton ride. Hey, Chatter, it's not nice to go out and tell lies. They would definitely never do a Curtis Blow Peloton ride. But if they did, it would probably be like... <laughs> I'm Curtis Blow, I got a Peloton ride. Listen to your instructor and take it in stride. We got bikes and pedals and handlebars. If they had an engine, it'd be a car, but it's not a car. It's a bike with an extra wheel, it'd be a trike. I'm Curtis Blow, and I'm here to say you should exercise most every day. You know, like, that's... They don't make real rap music anymore. It's all about the Hennessy and the hoes. Nobody's ever rapping about basketball being their favorite sport anymore and liking it when they dribble up and down the court. Or, like... <laughs> making a song called The Breaks, and then talking about all the different kinds of breaks you can have. Breaks on a glass, breaks on a car, breaks can make you a superstar. Breaks on a car, breaks on a bus. <laughs> oh, man. You should try doing 10 silly jumps just for the fun of it. Okay, silly jump number one. Silly jump number two. Oh. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> oh, man. As someone who works at a card store, I love hearing the magic talk. Xeneron, did you... Well, I know you know this. Did you know that I know this? Jay came into your card store. Wolves at my door. He came into your card store to buy Lorcana. Oh. I was in his chat one day, and he was like... Hey, Ryan, I met, like, a community member of yours at the card store. And I was like, who was it? And he was like, I can't remember his username, but it, like, started with, like, X-E-N or something like that. And I was like, that's Xeneron, bro! He's VIP! Yeah, I sold him some shit. Okay, let's not go crazy. I think he was gonna buy it anyway. I think he bought some shit from you. I don't know if you were involved. I'm not trying to insult, like, the role that you played in the transaction. I'm just not sure that I would call it a sales job. I think he probably walked in and said, hey, here's my receipt for this Lorcana stuff. I literally went into his chat and said, yo, I work at a store in Central Jersey and we have Lorcana. Okay, I apologize. I'm, I was not familiar with your game. Never mind. It's fucking funny, though, because Lorcana, if you don't know, is the Disney uh, trading card game. So, like, the cards will be like, Mickey Mouse. Sorcerer Mickey Mouse. Captain Hook. So I'm picturing, like, anytime an adult with a beard buys, like, $250 worth of product, I just think of, like, the 20 fucking 10-year-old kids who didn't get to buy a pack at the card store that weekend and, like, cried instead. <laughs> Sorry, we're all sort of sold out of Lorcana. It's been really popular. Maybe two days earlier, a dude with a fucking big bushy beard walking out with like 10 cases of the shit. Hung, 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 hung. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, kids. If you wanted some Lorcana, you should have gotten a tech job in 2006. You really had to do it to me like that? Well, at least it's not Pokemon. Pokemon is like way worse, right? Because that shit is like, <laughs> well, I don't, I, it's kind of like Harry Potter, right? I'm not trying to make any enemies, but like Pokemon was like my generation's childhood. And then I kind of thought like we were paying it forward and we we're like, it can be the next generation's childhood too. But it turns out like, no, it's just going to like be our adulthood. Fucking 500 dudes that look like me overrunning the Vincent Van Gogh Museum gift shop because they're selling, like, limited edition Pikachu Vincent Van Gogh portraits and shit. I mean, I, I can understand why millennials are catching some heat. There are a lot of us that I think basically said, like, no, 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 I'm not done with my childhood yet. 
We will be seeing Ghostbusters 203 opening weekend. I will be dressed as the original Ghostbusters. No one will be dressed as any of the Ghostbusters from Ghostbusters 3 to Ghostbusters 209. I want to be Venkman. No, you can't be Venkman. You got to be Dan Aykroyd. I'm going to be Venkman. I want to be Bill Murray. We already have four Bill Murrays. Somebody's got to be Dan Aykroyd, dude. I'm already Tracer. <laughs> Anna main. Anna main. Anna. Anna. Five fucking Anna mains. Yo, I have five fucking enemies on my fucking team! What the fuck is with this piece of shit game? Oh, <laughs> did, did you see? Librarian, this one's for you. Did you see uh, Aiden Ross asking XQC if he believed in the Big Bang or Pangria? Do you believe in the Big Bang Theory or Pangria? Pangria. What the fuck is Pangria? Like, that sounds like some World of Warcraft thing. World of Warcraft thing. It's where islands, like the whole world, is an island that got split into continents. Continents. The whole world? Or the, our planet. Our planet. Our planet. The world is the planet. Well, one theory doesn't affect the other. They're both part no, of the same thing. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But what I'm saying is, you know, like there's cons. There's consonants. There's um consonants. They, 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 they got broken apart. Yes. They got broken apart. That's what that is. So I'm saying, which one do you believe in? No, I think the, the Big Bang Ma makes all the plants and shit. Plants and shit. And the plant is, is in a certain state or shape, or or, or I'm not sure, but uh, has a certain con. It's made a certain way. And then meteor happens. A meteor happens, and it splits up. Right, and then we have continents. That's gonna how it happens. So they're both the same theory, right? Right. Sure. Okay. What does that yeah. affect the other? It's like, it's like saying, it's like saying, I have buttered bread. Buttered bread. Do you believe in butter? Buttered bread. Well, my bread is buttered. If it has both the same time, I don't believe in one or the other. They're both there. <laughs> and then they're t talking about the creation of the earth and, uh, oh, man. It's, it's such a good TikTok, man. It's so good. Oh. You said I don't practice Pangria, I ain't got no crystal ball. And then immediately, like a fucking flashback, the 311 Tiny Desk concert got stuck in my fucking head again. You motherfucker. Have you ever made out in dark hallways? Just placed a kiss that made your grade, huh? I played a hit from your record collection. It's your mix, congratulations. Three more silly jumps, here you go. Don't tell her. She's she closed the door. She's in my bathroom now. I saw a fucking big ass spider in there when I was taking a shower. It was big enough that like I saw something move. I didn't have my glasses on, and I saw some something move out of the corner of my eye. And then I, I was like, and I looked down on the ground, and I my animal brain was like, that's a spider, and it was it was a big spider. And then I put my glasses on and I looked at it and I was basically like, if you don't cause problems for me, then I'm not going to cause problems for you. If my wife sees the spider, she's going to be like, kill this motherfucker and I'm going to do it. But for now, I gave him a chance to, to live. Now let's see if he's going to take it. Why not send Ruka or Tomo? They're literally useless. Like they, they, they don't have the killer instinct anymore. Did they ever? Yeah, I mean, back in the day, Ruka used to used to hunt some flies and then eat them and throw up. Never cut it as a wise cat. Couldn't cut it as a Tomo stealing. So true. This is how you remind me of the f that I am a cat. <laughs> Silver side up ass. Big Bang Theory Pangria ass. I, it's so easy to be a streamer, bro. You just steal from chat. It's not like you to say meow. <laughs> just waiting on a different kitty. 
This time I'm mistaken for thinking you were still a kid. I've been, meow, I've been <laughs> to the bottom of every catnip. <laughs> Sorry. What if there was a hospital where they only treated you by playing classic rock? That'd be a good SNL sketch, right? 58 year old man in the hospital. What happened? Mm, he was exposed to some 100 gex at his daughter's birthday party. Get this man some don't stop believing. Stat. This is not a drill, people. I need Hotel California and a pair of AirPods immediately. A man's life is at stake. Sir? We don't have any doses of Sweet Caroline left. Oh, God. What do we have? ACDC. Please tell me it's Thunderstruck. All we have is whole lot of Rosie. It's gonna have to do. It's bad, so it would be good on SNL. Dang, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. I need to go back to the silly jumps, man. I've been here, I've been here for 80 minutes. That's so sad. Oh, man. NL in joke boat. NL hits killer joke to cut lead to 27,000. <laughs> I am ass at Jackbox lately, for sure. I've been losing wheel. I've been losing everything. I don't want to throw my friends under the bus and also chat. I'm just going to say, I don't think you guys know how to vote properly in Madverse City. Not all of my Madverse City raps are goaded, but some of the stuff that beats my Madverse City raps is like... It, it's it's corn core, bro. It's corn core. They're too deep. Well, like at least Chibli is always trying to do some stuff. He's always trying to like not rhyme or like insult you spiritually or something like that. I just hate when I lose to like, hey there, dude. I've had enough of your sass, so now I'm gonna beat your ass. My name's Apollo, and I'm here to say I be rap better than you every day. And then my shit is like, I take more risks than evil can evil. Sorry that my raps are too cerebral. Then I, I lose like 92 to 8. And I'm like, what the fuck? She trapped in my cadmium palace. You ever thought about freestyling? Isn't freestyling like a lie? Like, isn't, isn't freestyling like you pretend that it's coming off the top of your dome piece, but actually like you wrote it in your bedroom a week before and then just made it fit the beat? I'll tell you what's next, man. By the hour. You're like Rosie O'Donnell at a bisexual bridal shower. <laughs> Cut! See, I'm gonna let you know who the best by the hour. You're like Rosie O'Donnell at a bisexual bridal shower. Maybe, maybe in the running for greatest YouTube video of all time. But then again, I'm like, is it even the best freestyle rap battle video of all time? Because you've also got Mike Glambin versus Raindrop. Nothing's better than Eli. He was spitting. I mean, you're looking like Rosie O'Donnell at a bisexual bridal shower is an insane bar. I don't really know what it means, but it's, it's like a fucking opal or something like that. Like every time I think about the lyric, I get something different from it. <laughs> Look at that dental man, dent on the grill. It's another, he's, he was spitting, dude. It's crazy that he lost. Uh, not to spoil the video as well, but... I mean, I think he, he lost because he kind of like broke the rules, but... What about Adolf Hitler versus Darth Vader? I don't... The best of my knowledge, I have never seen an epic rap battles of history video. I couldn't tell you. Is that where I should start? Is that the best one? Is that like their Illmatic? Bill Gates versus Steve Jobs is goaded. <laughs> Oh, man. Rick Grimes. <laughs> Walter White versus Rick Grimes. Early 2010s YouTube is so fucking funny, man. Add that to the 2010 restaurants. Sriracha on every table. Bacon salts. Poster that says, like, keep calm and numb on. And then the TVs are all playing, like, epic mealtime and epic rap battles of history. Seven feet tall hamburgers with runny eggs on them. All the items are named... Pirates or ninja themed stuff. Oh man. 
Uh, that being said, you could get a bowl of pho for like six ninety nine back then. Would be kind of sick to have a Bene Gesserit voice in real life. It would make parenting like so easy. I mean, she'd be eating vegetables like crazy, bro. That's child abuse. <laughs> R slash raised by Bene Gesserit. Anybody else's parents use the voice to make them clean their room? I'm 17 years old and my mom just used the voice on me. Kind of unsure how to feel right now. <laughs> Update. <laughs> so true. Update. So I'm the Kwisatz Haderach. At first, I thought I was Muad'Dib. I thought I was Lizan Al Gaib. I thought I was the voice from the Outer Rim. But it turns out, yep, yeah, I'm the Kwisatz Haderach. So fucked up. Just found out my real grandfather was. We're not gonna get into it, okay? Am I the asshole? We told our son that he was an accident, but actually he's the byproduct of 100,000 generations of selective breeding. Everybody sucks here. <laughs> actually, Jessica kind of fucked it up by having a son. Bro, can you blame her? She was fucking in love with Oscar Isaac, bro. I don't know what's going on with the Dune rules of conception, but apparently if you're just fucking, you have like a daughter. And if you're fucking in love, you have like a son. You'd be like a rude awakening on the day of birth, I guess, if you thought that you were in a stable relationship. <laughs> okay, what do you think? Would you drink the water of life? No. She said no. She's not cut out to be the Reverend Mother. That's based, honestly. I wouldn't drink it either because I think it, it has a history of killing every man who ever consumes it. But you think it's possible that in the third movie they're going to be like, that shit was just blue Kool-Aid? Yeah, but we, we don't maintain chain of custody on the vial of blueness. They might have swapped that with Powerade at some point. Well, on the Coke Zero, I understand. Drink it with a life straw. Me when they want me to become the Reverend Mother and drink the water of life. Um, dub, double it and give it to the next girl. I reject the premise. <laughs> oh, man. Woo! You really gonna summarize the whole movie just through bits? Yeah, maybe. Bring back like 2019 Twitter. Dune 2, out of context, like four screenshots. Can you do Obama if he was Paul Atreides? <laughs> no, I can't, I can't. You're, you got the wrong guy, man. You got the wrong guy. Also, like, here's how cooked Twitter is. I, honestly, I'm sex positive, okay? But, like, Twitter is, is too cooked. Like, you'll see, like, a tweet about Dune, and then you click on it to read what people are saying about Dune, and there's, like, a hundred OnlyFans bots typing shit that, like, I don't want to see. They're like, I touched myself in the theater. You got a mental illness, lady. I don't give a shit. You shouldn't be fucking... I don't even know what you call it. You shouldn't be polishing the gems in the middle of the movie. There's other people around you. It's actually a cry for help. I want to see like 13 year old kids being like, I thought Paul Atreides was a good guy, but like, how do I reconcile this with his actions closer to the end of the movie? Instead, it's fucking all robots that are like, I jerked off in the movie theater. And I'm like, this fucking gross. You should take that to the grave with you. That's why I use control panel for Twitter and remove all blue check replies. Honestly, no nothing of value is lost for sure. I know there's probably some people here that are like, I have Twitter blue. And I'm like... You just gotta look at the kind of company you associate with, is all I'm gonna say, okay? You might be cool, you're watching me, so I'm predisposed to think that you're cool. But like, I don't want to associate with the... My, my own identity with the kinds of people that I see... Posting on Twitter blue. It's all thread boys and fucking porn bots, man. Gom Jabbar in bio, so true. <laughs> Pussy in bio? Um, try hand in box, lady. That's right, we're, we're administering the Gom Jabbar test to determine your impulse control. Ooh, it turns out you're not the Kwisatz Haderach. Mmm, sorry, sorry. You could be like the Kwisatz Haderach's like great uncle or something like that. 
Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe like, I don't know, your fucking sister's grandkid might be the Kwisatz Haderach or something like that, but your ass, mm, I don't think so. Do you want spice? We don't have any fucking spice. Woo! <laughs> You're just like me after I saw Dune? The shoe is inspiring, man. It really, like, made me want to learn how to read so I could get some more context. But then I was like, I don't know, I could probably knock out the Dune audiobook in, like, three weeks of Peloton rides. I don't mean to pit two bad bitches against each other, but, like, Star Wars is fucked, man. If you asked me how I felt about Star Wars before watching Dune and Dune Part 2, I would have been like, eh, it's got some good stuff, it's got some bad stuff. After I watched Dune Part 2, I was like, what the fuck are we doing? Er, I don't like you. I don't like you either. Like, what are we, for fucking 40 years we were doing that shit? We were put, putting up a tent and waiting outside for a weekend so we could be the first people in the movie theater to see that shit? What were we doing, bro? And those were the good ones. <laughs> yeah, Star Wars needs to go fucking weirder, dude. I mean, there's many things that Dune has over Star Wars. It being written for grown-ups, I guess, is like a good start. Don't you realize, I was thinking about it, how crazy is it that the biggest movie of the year so far is that fucking crazy? Like, I don't want to spoil things about Dune if you haven't seen it, but it's like... You wouldn't predict that it would be like that and fucking Transformers 8 going toe-to-toe -to -toe for like biggest movie of the year. Some of this shit, you're like, it, and yeah, like the, one of the characters is a fucking fetus, bro, that you see. You would be like, no, nah, no shot. How much did this movie make at the box office? Maybe like $90 million. Did you get the popcorn bucket? They didn't have the special popcorn bucket at my theater. Um, I didn't want that popcorn bucket either. It seemed like it would, I, I get the joke, obviously. But it, uh, it looks like it would, after, as you were trying to pull the popcorn out, it seems like it would pull the popcorn back in. Did you get fresh popcorn? I did. I, I'm happy to report I did get fresh popcorn. I got something to say, though. They shouldn't charge extra for butter. If you want me to buy more popcorn, you should give me the best version of the popcorn for what it costs. Instead of relying on, they're like, oh, it's really better with the popcorn. Well, it sounds like if you want to be a popcorn merchant, then you should fucking include that shit gratty, as far as I'm concerned. They charge for that in Canada? It's like two bucks. So I opted out. Canada's cooked. Wait until you find out that we don't get the tortilla chips and salsa free at the Mexican restaurant. How dare they? Well, okay, there's some places you do. There's, if you go to Lone Star Texas Grill in Kingston, Ontario, you will get tortilla chips and salsa. But at like many Mexican restaurants in Canada, I mean, you're paying eight bucks for, for chips and salsa. But then they like make up for it or try to make up for it by giving you like one salsa and then like two other salsas that you don't fucking want. They always has to come with a fucking rubric when the tortilla chips and salsa come out. So this one's like a normal salsa, and this one's like a habanero mango smoked cotilla Oaxaca cheese salsa. And this one is kind of like some ketchup that we left out overnight. Okay, enjoy. This one's a tomatillo salsa verde as filtered through like a, a salsa roja. And then one of them is just like mayonnaise and chili powder. Can you do the fade Rautha voice? I don't think so, no. No, I don't think I will. <laughs> How come they're all bald like you on that planet? I don't know. Fucking... Twas the style at the time. That is a great bit. Tom Hanks and Elvis, but instead he's talking about Fade Rautha. So what's the big deal? We already got a Bene Gesserit, Kwisatz, Haderach candidate. He's white. He's what? And then the montage of him coming in in the Coliseum? That would be... <laughs> but Timothy Chalamet is also white. In fact, in the movie, he eats a meal and they ask him if it's too spicy for him. 
and then Zendaya has to go like leave him alone. Yeah, I think Paul Atreides is the kind of guy that would like go into a Fremen restaurant and be like, yeah, I'll take this dish hot. And I'm not talking like Caladan hot. I'm talking about like Arrakis hot. Like if I were a Fremen and I ordered it hot, make it as hot as you would that, as if I were not an Atreides. Yeah, I think he would definitely do that, 100%. White boy orders in perfect Fremen. <laughs> oh, man. Is it true that in Dune, the book, when he, when he chooses his Fremen name, in his head, he's like, I've had dreams of me killing 61 billion people via the name... Muad'Dib, so all I have to do is avoid calling myself Muad'Dib, and then Stilgar is like, so what do you want your name to be? And he's like, so what's the name of that little mouse in the desert? And then Stilgar goes, oh, Muad'Dib? That's 100% true. I gotta read these books, bro. <laughs> he could have just been like, oh, I'm just kidding, not that. You don't understand, bro. You don't know shit about the golden path. I'm just joking. Me neither. Everyone should read the first book. Yeah, but it, the first book is like 900 pages, right? And then the second one is like 38 pages. First one's about 600. Well, it's not that crazy. No, Messiah's very long too. Oh, so Children of Dune is the one that's like... 250 pages or something. Yeah, can't they just explain it to me in a 30 second TikTok? <laughs> I want to see those two guys on the Comic Book Explained podcast explain it. So you're saying that Paul Atreides has Bene Gesserit training. That's right. Because Lady Jessica originally thought that she was going to have a daughter to fulfill the prophecy. So, she already had some knowledge of how to raise Paul in Bene Gesserit traditions. Wait, is that how he was able to transmute the water of life? Exactly. When Bene Gesserits ascend to royal martyr motherhood, they gain a new ability to alter the complexity of a molecule. Yeah, I would say Jessica took a shit in the mother toilet for sure. <clears throat> hey chat, what should I do at the gym today? Um, pelvic thrusts in the squat rack. Irritate the power lifters. You should do the thing where you like, you get, you put your feet on the bench and hook them so that you're like in a permanent sit up and then you bench press while you're doing the sit up. Hollow hold bench press. It combines the best aspects of uh, weightlifting, hypertrophy with the best aspects of yoga, spinal injury. You ever thought about doing a tenant-themed peloton ride where you pedal backwards for the first half? Oh, man, that's a great idea. There is a member of the, of the peloton community. Doaku, are you here? Every once in a while, they'll pop into the peloton discord and be like, I set a new PB today. It was like 140 watt average pedaling backwards. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, this is like a new world. I'm not even going to try to touch that one. Hand pedaling when? Listen, I'm just going to say something. And if it offends you, then so be it. Every time I see someone on a recumbent bicycle outside, I know they're a little freak. I'm sorry. I know they're out here with the fucking GoPro on their head, causing problems, getting into arguments with pedestrians and other cyclists and drivers all the time. I'm not saying you don't see cyclists on upright bicycles that are, you know, causing problems. But when I see someone on a recumbent bicycle, I'm like, this person's taking pleasure in causing problems. Maybe you're different. Maybe you have a, a back injury that means you have to use a recumbent bicycle. What's a recumbent bike? It's the one where like you, you're sitting down and your legs go out in front of you instead of underneath you. So like instead of being like five feet off the ground, you're like one foot off the ground. Which is like the other reason that I don't think I would ever do it because I think like, I'm not naive. If I'm cycling and I get hit by a car, I'm probably gonna get fucked up pretty bad. 
But if you're on a recumbent bike and you get hit by a car, like they might not even know that they hit you, right? You're going under the fucking chassis. Unless you could, you could do like a six slide. <laughs> That's what the flag is for. They do always have a flag. There's no doubt about that. I'm not really knocking the recumbent bikes. But I, like, it's, maybe it's not fair, but I really do. When I, when I see a recumbent cyclist outside, I do go, oh, here we go. So I guess I am knocking them completely, actually. In the gym? In the gym, whatever, man. If you, if you choose the recumbent over the stand-up in the gym, maybe it's just better for your back. Please stop with the Dune references. You should go see it. It's a good movie. Has anyone asked how many bathroom breaks you took during Dune 2? Okay, listen, I only took one bathroom break in Dune 2. I definitely could have taken two, because I did go to the bathroom after the movie was over. But the shit was three hours long, plus there were 15 trailers before it. Like, and I drank like a liter of uh, fucking Diet Coke within like 20 minutes of the start of the movie. But I, here's my thing about pissing with movies, or in movies. If you have to go piss during the movie, you should literally just go. You don't need Piss Me Not or whatever the app is. No movie has ever been as good as not having to hold your piss for 90 increasingly alarming minutes. You also, like, if you've ever seen a movie before, you fucking know... Like, I'm not saying that action always trumps dialogue. It depends on the movie you're in. But if you just watched a fucking ornithopter get shot out of the air by, like, a plasma rocket launcher, and then you see, you know, Paul Atreides drinking a, a cup of spit in the desert, you're like, this is my moment. It's time for me to go piss. I'm going to miss some overarching themes or something like that, but it's, it's worth it to get the piss out. Just piss before the movie? People are getting way too fucking familiar, bro. I piss when my body tells me to go piss. I'm not gonna be, oh, I pissed before the movie. Even though I got a tingle in my bladder, I'm like not gonna go pee now where the piss wins. I'm just gonna go piss, bro. I'm drinking liquid, I'm gonna piss, exactly. Don't drink the liquid? How about you mind your fucking business, bro? I definitely, I will say though, the reason I didn't take a second bathroom break was because I really, there was like a 40 year old dude who was the only guy I had to get by in order to get to the bathroom. Uh, and like, I went by him once and I was like, that's fine. That's socially acceptable. But like me asking him to tuck his legs in two times over the course of one movie, I was just like, I'm not gonna do it to that guy. He didn't do anything to deserve that. But I, I was also like, holy fuck brother, you don't have to take a piss. Like, who are you trying to impress? You're 40 years old. Go take a piss, and then I'll wait like a minute so it's not like I'm following you to the bathroom, and then I'll go to the bathroom before you come back. But this dude, he was a serious fucking watcher. He probably he had a diaper in or something, man. But I'm not going to be shamed for going piss during the movie. If I got I, I probably piss once during every movie at the movie theater. <laughs> If anything, I'm mad at my body when I have to go piss twice in a movie, though. So I am like, damn, bitch, you couldn't have just gotten all out the first time? Like, the first piss was like a 35 second long piss. It was not like, oh, I have to go a little bit, like, let's be proactive. I was like, I've got to go piss. So I took like a 1.5x piss. And then 45 minutes later, my bladder was like, I got some more. And I was like, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you just get, why, knock that shit out the first time, bro? I actually think, like, Dune is probably a really easy movie not to go piss during because there's, like, no water in the whole movie. I bet that, like, the average person probably takes 1.2 pisses during Dune Part 2. The average person probably takes, like, 2.1 pisses during Avatar. If you're, if you're going to see the remastered version of The Abyss in theaters, bring a diaper or get ready to read some... Plot fill-ins on Wikipedia after you get out of the theater, okay? And Kate, how was that parking spot outside of the movie theater? Oh, baby. I don't even want to tell you. Fifth Avenue Cinemas on the corner of Burrard and Fifth Avenue. Spot right out in front. At first, I thought the spot wasn't that great because 
like the doors that it was in front of, we couldn't go in through them, but that's because when we exited, we were right fucking there. Literally opened the door to the movie theater, our car was right there, like it was valet parked. It's a star-studded event when I valet park. Open up my mouth in sunlight, illuminate the dark. You know what I'm saying? Is that a Joe Cole bar? I believe it's Paul Wall. <laughs> Best song on that album? I, I do have to say, I think I'm, maybe it's old hat at this point. I gotta go We Major. Gone is really good. Celebration's really good. I mean, there's a lot of classic tracks on it. John Bryan did some cooking. Bro did late registration production and the I Heart Huckabees and Eternal Sunshine soundtracks all in like a two year window. What the fuck was John Bryan cooking, man? Not to mention his solo album, which has a couple of slappers on it. It is so funny to imagine John Bryan going from doing the score for Eternal Sunshine though to like being in the lab with Kanye West and Nas <laughs> on Wii Major and like sitting in the booth like feeling better than we've ever felt before today and he, better late than never it's orientation like he, he made an of Montreal remix too this guy he was doing some serious work John Bryan is on the keys right now it's not that crazy if you've ever written music. All right, well, fuck me, I guess. It's, it's kind of funny for me to imagine John Bryan with his fucking... <laughs> his Rivers Cuomo haircut in the lab with 2004 Kanye West. That's kind of funny. That, that juxtaposition is funny to me. What were you doing that year? I guess I was going to the 11th grade and then I was listening to late registration a lot on summer vacation while I played Halo 2 multiplayer. I was shitting in diapers. <laughs> that's sick. That's, that's kind of sick. I love that for you. You were only in the 11th grade? In 2005? Two, 2000, 2004, 04, 05 season, that was my 11th grade season. NHL lockout, got my driver's license, late registration came out. Desperate Housewives was the biggest show on TV. I was telling people to watch Arrested Development. They were telling me, we can't. It's on the same night as the fucking OC. I was like, you're going to regret it. You're going to regret it. Please, please watch it. They're going to cancel it. Prince William, hottest guy in the world. So true. The world was dominated by Paris Hilton, Nicole Richie, Prince William, and Lindsay Lohan. It was a bright spot for the culture, for sure. <laughs> You ever see that picture of Paris Hilton kissing the lady's belly because she thinks she's pregnant, but actually she's just a little chubby? It's from that era. That's got to be like from 2006 or something. <laughs> oh, man. You can't upload this one to YouTube. Nothing happens. Something happened, man. We had fun. We had a fun time. That's what happened. That's life sometimes, man. 9 a.m., leave your house. 5 p.m., come back. Eat dinner. Sleep for eight hours. Wake up in the morning. Guess where you're at, motherfucker? Same place you were yesterday. That's life. I did nothing at work. It's Monday! You don't have to work on Monday. You don't have to work on Friday, okay? And then Thursday is almost Friday. So at lunch, you can start to fuck off a little bit. Maybe even go to happy hour. But Tuesday, Wednesday, and the first half of Thursday, you got to go nuts to the fucking grindstone, okay? Good ethics. <laughs> but this week, this week is fucked, right? Because it's Easter. So as far as I'm concerned, like you don't have to work Monday because it's Monday. And then Friday is a holiday. So fucking Thursday is Friday, so you don't have to work Thursday, which means half of Wednesday is cooked. Are you really going to do a one and a half day work week? You might as well just fucking fuck around the whole time. But the trade-off is that you have to work on Monday because you haven't worked in so long that on Monday you got to come back, you got to go nuts to the grindstone. The thing is, because you work that Monday, 
By the time you get to Wednesday, you're going to be feeling like you normally do halfway through Thursday, and that's where you can fuck off a little bit until the weekend, and then you reset it that weekend. Nah, dude, that's Easter Monday. I thought Easter Monday was fake. I thought I made that up and everyone yelled at me. Nope. <laughs> it's on Google Calendar? Well, it must be true then. Isn't Google Calendar the same company that said there's no countries in Africa that start with K? But there's one that's close. It's Kenya. Okay, I'm going to send you over to my wife's stream. Enjoy yourself. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a good time. See you then. Is that you humming, Austin? Come on! Not you? There. Does she walk? Does she talk? Does she come complete? My home, he home knows. angel always pulled me from my seat. She was pure like snowflakes, no one could ever stain. The memory of my angel could never cause me pain. Years go by, I'm looking through a girl in a magazine. And there's my homeroom angel on the pages in between. My blood runs cold, my memory has just been sold. My angel is the centerfold, angel is the centerfold. My blood runs cold, my memory has just been sold. Angel is the centerfold Slip me notes under the desk When I was thinking about her dress I was shy, I turned away Before she caught my eye I was shaking in my shoes Whenever she flashed those baby blues Something had a hold on me When Angel passed close by Those soft fuzzy sweaters Too magical to touch to see her in that negligee is really just too much. My blood runs cold and my memory has just been sold. My angel is the centerfold. Angel is the centerfold. My blood runs cold. My memory has just been sold. Oh yeah, angel is the centerfold. Okay. It's okay, I understand. This ain't no never, never land. I hope that when this issue's gone, I'll see you when your clothes are on. Take your car, yes we will. We'll take your car and drive it. Take it to a motel room and take them off in private. A part of me has just been ripped. Pages from my mind are stripped. Oh no, I can't deny it. Oh yeah, I just gotta buy it. My memory has just been sold. My angel is the centerfold. Angel is the centerfold. My blood runs cold. My memory has just been sold. My angel is the centerfold. Na 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 na. All right, all right. One, two, three, four. Na 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 na. That's unity, baby. I didn't even have to doubt it. I knew he was coming in. Na 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 My blood runs cold, my memory has just been sold. Angel is the centerfold, Angel is the centerfold. I think that was a pretty solid performance. Austin's A game is very good. I brought my A game, that's as good as it gets for me. So I, if you were expecting platinum, that's what you just got. So, I mean, obviously, hit the publish button on that one.